ordained by the God, Lord Krishna, because he has announced that I decide who has created this forecast. Well, some of the foreign authors have gone into the roots of the issue and found that the caste originated from occupation, purity, impurity, etc., etc. But it is for the first time that Dr. Ambedkar who found that the basis for the caste is imposition of exogamy on endogamy. The definition given by Dr. Ambedkar or caste is encircled class is the caste. Encircled class is the caste. It is the first who the priestly class who encircled themselves and became a caste that the latter other classes forget. So the theory given by the Baba Sahib Dr. Ambedkar about the genesis of caste is it is through marriage only the caste is being perpetuated. Therefore, he wanted to destroy the caste. He found that the caste can be destroyed. He found that the caste can be annihilated. Then he came out with the theory of annihilation of caste. He was the victim of caste. From his childhood, as all of you know, the details of the atrocities, insults and humanities, inhumiliations, suffered by Dr. Ambedkar. That made him to know why a person is denied water from other hands, why a person is refused admission to school, why a person is refused to have a transport, just in the name of caste. Can such things be happened? Denial of all these things. Right to education, right to travel, right to speak, right to live, right to have a decent living. She has gone through all these various aspects of caste atrocities. And ultimately came out with a theory that as long as this caste prevails, as long as the caste continues, untouchability continues. As long as the caste continues, atrocities will continue. As long as the caste continues, injustice and inhumanities continue. So the root cause for this insults, infamy, injustice, oppression, suppression, slavery, or this so-called scheduled caste, is because of only one thing, that is caste. So unless you remove this caste, you cannot remove this untouchability. You cannot remove the injustices. You cannot remove the inhumanities. You cannot resurrect the human dignity. That's what Dr. Ambedkar felt. So the whole mission, this whole work, is just to resurrect the human being, confirm the human dignity, provide equality, and equal opportunities. That was his mission. So that's why his most obvious struggle is for equality and equal opportunities. See, so struggle for equality and equal opportunity because he and his caste are denied equality and equal opportunities. He attained equality. He surpassed Ram. He excelled himself. Probably he's the, he was the first person who obtained a doctorate degree from a foreign university in India. Prior to Dr. Medgar, there were none who obtained a foreign research degree in India. Not even Gandhi, not even Nehru, not even Bose. None. There were none. It was first. He was the first person to receive doctoral degree from this university, from German University, from London School of Economics. So he excelled himself. He surpassed all. He has become a giant among giants, tallest of the intellectual persons in India. He was not sufficient, he was not happy with that. Achieving excellence for himself 
is not of his own creed. He wanted to bring all these people up along with him. That's why he started his mission to bring equality to the Democratic caste. Democratic rights, equality, liberty. That's why he has chosen three things and incorporated in the Constitution of India. Liberty, equality, and fraternity. Justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. So the whole mission, the whole work is round about bringing equality and providing equal opportunities for this civil aspect. That's why it is the first struggle in the round table conference before the British government is to provide representation, an opportunity to participate in the governance of this country. That was his first mission. The first struggle in order to see the people from exclusion to be included and to have a participation in the governance of this country he fought with the British government and snatched from them against the wishes of Gandhi to have a participation in the governance of the country according to their population. That was the first achievement Dr. Ambedkar received, got in his mission to provide an opportunity of participation in the governance of the country by the people who were excluded totally from this arena. For that purpose he wanted an education, for that purpose he wanted employment. So to have an education, you must have an arrangement to see that these people are given education according to their population. Though what we call reservations, he never used the term reservations, he always used participation. Participation in the field of education, employment and power through or by or in accordance with the percentage of the population of the people. So that was his second attempt, <coughs> second achievement. The third thing, democratic rights. Those people who were denied human rights, to those people who were denied civil rights, those people who are denied human rights, civil rights, the democratic rights. Rights are of three kinds. One is human right, the other 